Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are wrapping up the broader exploration of snow in watercolors by using a pretty common method, um, some salt, uh, when it's wet and wet. So, we'll get to that in a bit, and we'll just start with the painting. I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua in front of me. This is the 140 pound uh, cold press. I had just worked on a piece with a, a sheet of it, so I had another sheet out. And it's whiter than I usually use, so that'll be interesting. Let's see what we want to do. I'm going to grab a mixture of Payne's Gray and Ultramarine, and I'm going to map out my idea for my landscape. I do not have a composition in mind, but I think I know what I want to do. Maybe we'll do one of those kind of distant scenes where we're going horizontally across with variations of trees going up and down. Let's put a little wash and some tone in the sky. I usually uh, will dab with the paper towel whenever I'm painting fast and loose like this uh, for texture. However, I think I'm gonna avoid that for right now as that might affect a little bit of the, um, the salt application. So this is um, Ultramarine and Payne's Gray mixed together, which Payne's Gray is made with a black and a blue. Um, I'm just not sure what blue is being used in there. It would say on the tube, but well, I got the tube right here, so you no, know, it's the lamp black. So I don't have my Payne's Gray tube out. Historically, there was an application with um, three different colors for that mixture, but there's been a lot of grays. I think I have a video up on um, the Davies Gray. That was an interesting one. It was kind of greenish. And then there's, I think Alvaro has a gray out. I think uh, Jane Blundell has a gray out. Let's see. You know, we can even move our way forward in the picture plane and just raise up the um, the value, just kind of get things darker and stronger as we move closer. This might be a super quick painting, like quicker than usual. We want some snow in the land, so use some white of the paper. I don't think I've ever did, uh, completed a painting where it was just Payne's Gray in Ultramarine, but it has a nice frostiness to it. I'm curious about how the, um, the softening will be, the tonal shift whenever we do a dry off. I don't mind paper toweling where I know that I want it to be white. Maybe we'll put a figure in the scene, but Whenever we dry off, maybe a um, Herman Herzog esque figure. I have some um, videos on here where I did some studies of his work, other sketches, or um, pen and ink. He was a painter, American. Um, German born, I believe, uh, Hudson River Valley uh, school 
1800s. Okay, uh, I think we have an interesting surface to just kind of play with salt on and then see how it dries the painting in general, the tonal shift. And we'll see how the salt affects it. I used to have a little um, bottle of salt on this table when I was first setting up the art room. I don't know what happened to it. You can get some really great textures from it. I think it just absorbs the water in those spots. I believe maybe sprinkling rubbing alcohol gets the same effect or similar. Also uh, taking some um, water and just kind of splattering it on a painting will kind of give a, a kind of a, a, a fairy softness to it, a nice whimsicalness. I'm kind of salting over the land itself because so it won't really block the sky, I don't think, unless we have snow coming right in front of us. That's for you to decide if you want to add salt there or not. I don't know if I mentioned, um, I'm not sure if coarseness affects it. This salt has uh, different size grains to it. I just literally went in the kitchen and grabbed some. So play around and if salt intrigues you, you can definitely look it up and see what other people are doing with salt. And uh, then from there, experiment with different types of salt. That might be your thing because you can play with different textures and you're gonna wind up finding what works for you and what you enjoy. So, um, so explore and be prepared to kind of find yourself uh, kind of a little niche or niche within that. So I am going to pause this and I'm gonna hit with the blow dryer, but I'll remove the salts on camera. Okay, so I hit it with the blow dryer. Um, it softens some. I really like just the kind of overall feel of this combination. I do want to point out, I was using the blow dryer from this direction at first. And you could see some streaks here. And I'm wondering if there was a directional push of the water and that's what created that effect. So it might be something that you'd want to exploit. Yeah, Hammy using that uh, blow dryer from different directions for different marks with it. Uh, what it really stands out to me as, I'm not sure if it's the color combination or that movement, it also has a underwater coral type feel. So there's a lot of different possibilities for using salt. Okay, so the removal of it, um, you're gonna get some salt over things, but, what I'm going to do is just take a piece of paper and put it right here. Hopefully the camera doesn't um, start acting wonky. I had a handy palette knife. So let's see. Palette knife scrapes it off good. There's some areas that are still damp. It gives a nice uh, frosted effect. And... I know at the beginning I said that I covered most ways of doing so, um, snow, but this has me thinking of the obvious way, which I didn't do, um, is masking fluid. I just really don't have the, the patience for masking fluid, but uh, there's some artists that use it to <laughs> amazing success. Um, I always mention Rick uh, Sukowitz, because he was one of the first um, artists that I watched on YouTube. And he does these interior snow scenes that are just absolutely phenomenal. He'll um, take his masking fluid, put it out, and then from there, I'm gonna paint over it, remove the masking fluid, and then go back with tones and values um, and washes into those masking fluid areas for even tree branches. Definitely check him out. He's got tons of free videos. And, um, very influential okay so I used a palette knife to kind of scrape that off from the side I didn't damage the paper in any way 
Uh, I believe some people use stiff brushes. Um, you can find what works for you. Now I pause for a moment, looking at the painting through the camera, uh, debating to myself, do I wanna just leave it like this or do I wanna kinda of add a little bit of extra? I think I wanna stay within the palette and add a little bit more extra. What's, what's up, Hammy? What's wrong, bud? Let's um, play with some branches and kind of just add some more form to what's going on here. We have snow that's uh, catching and piling upon some uh, groups of leaves. We can just give it a little bit more form. We could have stayed super loose with it and just left it as it was. Um, and that would really kind of just drive the home salt texture. But here's just a uh, ultramarine mixed with um, the Payne's Gray. You can alternate back and forth, put some ultramarine in, grab some Payne's Gray, make sure both, put a little bit more water in. I was talking to Joe Menza and Matthew Clemens, I think one day about just kind of perfecting that circle motion and having it hit on the upstroke and lift on the downstroke. Harrison, guys, why are you all scratching out that door? And you could even step in a, a little bit of Dotson if you want to really go at it. Grab a hake brush, or I need to find a, um, the reference of the scary brush. I think I still have that book. And talking about texture and what kind of works for you, there's um, one book, I think it was Watercolor My Way, or My Way with the Watercolor, and it was written quite a while back, and I think the gentleman had passed, unfortunately. Uh, beautiful work, and he really talked a lot about texture within that book. Um, and he had shown all these different techniques, but he kind of had said, you know, focus on one. Don't try to get them all on there. You can use some, but have one more predominant than the others, just so it's not just overwhelming and that that was his approach uh, to texture you know we could do the <laughs> I swear I fed them before I started painting so I don't know what all the um, the fuss is about maybe they got the zoomies a little bit and that's why they're acting up all right I like that now, so far we've used this, the rigor and uh, the hake, so I think we'll stay with that. Let me grab the number one again, which looks oddly clean. Did I have two number ones out? I'm sure you guys saw me holding two brushes, saying to myself, where's the other brush, or where's the other number one? Oh, it's Friday, it was a long work week. We still have all of next week before winter break. Let's, um, let's put them right here. I feel like it would be too balanced putting them right here and I don't want to put them dead center. Him or her. I'm using Frank Clark's um, carrot man method. Where you're gonna draw a carrot with the brush and that's gonna give you your figure. Now, I did make this on the larger size of things. You can play with the um, the size of the figure itself. That's going to change the way the um, the foliage looks size wise. Kind of just using a figure 
to create a sense of scale. I like to give the people a hat on their head just because for me, it looks a little awkward the head sometimes, but um, I don't really practice my figures. I think if you practice just a little bit, you'll have um, a nice variation. I think David Usher would post or do a lot of um, practice figures. Let's um, just make a few horizontal marks here. You can even put a little bit of sticks and twigs coming up. Let's try it off and take a look. All right, very pleased, very fast and loose snow scene. Um, so today's the 15th. So we have about you know, 10 days until Christmas. So if there's any um, last minute holiday-esque um, videos, paintings, uh, whatever, uh, how do you maybe uh, Christmas cards or something like that that you would like to see let me know down below and I will try to get that filmed and uploaded before uh, the end of the holidays uh, on that note hope you enjoyed you're always welcome to follow along with anything that I do you're always welcome to sign your own name to it and you're welcome to sell anything you do whenever you follow along or, or give it away um, I want you guys to have fun and um, have money for art supplies uh, if you want to support this channel, I have the Patreon link down below. Thank you to everybody that supports me through there. I take that money and I put it back into supplies and film more uh, videos. All right, have a great day. Have a safe and happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and uh, Happy New Year's.